Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. What's up? How's it going? Um, this is a new little tutorial series here that I want to start. Thank you to the guy on Instagram who actually messaged me that idea. I want to show you how you can work with the Android Room Library and just a real relational database here. So a database that contains multiple tables and multiple relationships. Because usually in tutorials you only see people use a single table, like in a note app you have a table for notes, but that's actually it. And I also have these tutorials. And it's good that it is that way, because then you don't need to understand all that database stuff in detail. But if you need to implement a more complex database in your app, then you're pretty much screwed if you only know how to do that with a single table. So in this first video, um, I will give you a little bit of theory that is really crucial to understand this whole playlist here. This will be a short playlist, maybe five or six videos. But really, if you don't understand how relational databases work, don't skip this video. And I'm serious, don't skip it. This will be important. And if you don't understand this video, you can forget about understanding the videos that will follow up. So every time you want to work with um, relational databases, such as SQLite, which we use um, with the room library in Android. Whenever you do that, and you actually have a little bit more complex database that just needs uh, multiple tables, then I highly recommend you to model that database first on a piece of paper. And for that, you need to know how to make such um, so-called ER models, that stands for Entity Relationship Models, and that is just kind of a way to model your database on a piece of paper that just makes it very clear which tables you have, which relations between those tables and which attributes or properties the single tables actually have. So I will actually show you an example here of such an ER model and also of the database that we will actually implement here in this tutorial series. So this will essentially be a little school database. So on the one hand we have as we have a table schools and when I say table that is the same as entity or the other way around when I say entity that is the same as a table in a database. So in a table we just have several columns. Each column represents a property or an attribute of that specific table. So a school for example has a name, it has a city it is located in, it has an address and whatever, you can be very creative here. So those are all single properties that make up the single columns of our table. And when we now want to save um, specific schools in that table, so single entries, these entries in the end make up our um, rows in that table. So we could have a school in Berlin with the name whatever Kotlin school, then we could have a JetBrains school in New York, whatever, um, you get the idea. So each single school is one row in our table. And when we want to model these um, entities, these tables, in our ER model, in our entity relationship model here on a piece of paper, then we do this by simply writing the table names into rectangles. So in my table here that I will use in our school database, we will have a table for schools, we will have a table for directors, we will have a table for students and we will have a table for subjects. So I really want to keep this super simple here, so I won't add too many attributes to these single tables we have here. But each table essentially needs at least one attribute that is used for the primary key. So each table in a relational database, of course, can have tons of rows in it and there must be a way for the database to actually distinguish between um, different rows. And for that we will use the primary key. So that must be an attribute that is unique. So there are no two rows that have the same primary key. And it is it really doesn't matter what type that primary key is of. Um, the most important thing is that it is unique. But usually in practice you will use IDs for that because if you just have numbers, they just make it very easy to be unique. However, in this example here, I won't use these IDs, I will just use names. So for example, the school primary key will be the school name, um, the student primary key will be the student name, and so on. So 
In practice, you wouldn't do it like this because of course there could be two students with the same name. But to actually understand this whole concept here, I think this is actually a little bit smarter because then you can just see, okay, student Peter participates at subject math and you don't say, okay, student with the ID two participates at subject with ID nine. That just um, doesn't really make it understandable here. So essentially, our school will have the school name property, which is a primary key. And if you have a primary key attribute in an ER model, then you simply underline that attribute to mark this as a primary key. Then each director will have a director name, which is the primary key of the director table. Each student will have a student name, which is the primary key of a student table. Um, each student will also have a semester, which is just a normal attribute, just to show you how that would work. So that is just um, an, ad an additional bubble that is not underlined. And last but not least, the subject has a subject name, which is also primary key. So this is cool now. We have our four tables, but we don't know how these tables are actually related to each other. So we know all of our students, all of our subjects, for example, but we don't know which students actually participate in which subjects and which subjects are participated by which students. So of course, you could save a list of subjects in the student class, um, just the list of subjects that student visits, and then also a list of students in the subjects class, which are the students that visit that subject. But that is so much data you would need to save. Um, you would never do it this way. So the whole point of relational databases here is to define relations between our entities, between our tables. And now it's important that, that you carefully listen if you've never heard of this relation concept of relational databases, um, because there are three types of different relations we can have in a database. On the one hand, those are one to one relations. So what does that mean? So let's take a look at our schools table and our directors table. If we take a look at a specific school, how many directors can that school actually have? Well, if you have a school, there can only be one director of that school. At least that is the rule that I define with that database here. Okay, so let's take a look at the other side. If we take a look at a specific director, how many schools can that director actually be a director of? Well, I don't know of any cases, but I think if you're a school director, you're only director of a single school and you're not director of multiple schools. So in that case, that is a one to one relationship because the school can actually only have one director and the director can actually only belong to one school. And the way we model this in our ER model here is with such a diamond shape. So we have that diamond shape and we put the name of that relation into that shape. So in our case here with our school and our director, um, you could either put the way from our school to our director in that diamond. So the school and the, the relation name would be is directed by, or we do it the other way around that we call that relation directs. So a director directs the school or leads a school or whatever you like. But later in code, we have better names for those um, just to make sure that we can identify those. But here in this model, this just makes it I think a little bit better understandable if we give these relations just these natural names. And that is also how we learned that in university. And the type of relationship is here one to one. So on each side of the relation here, we just simply put a one. One school has one director and one director belongs to one school. Let's take a look at our next two tables, our school table and our student table, because these are of course also related. We have students inside of schools um, and we want to define a relation for that. So let's start from the student pers perspective here. So if we take a look at one student, how many schools can that student actually be in? So actually only one school. If you're a student, you only go to one school at a time. Let's take a look at the school. If we have one school, how many students can be in that school? Well, there can be a lot, not only one student, but several ones. So this time, this is not a one to one relationship because there can be multiple students in a single school. 
So we call this actually one to n relationship. So one school can have n, so a variable number of students, but one student actually only belongs to one school. So this time we put the number one on the side of the school because one school contains n students. We put the n on the side of the students and then we simply put the relational diamond in, mi in the middle of that. For example, call that visits. So each student visits a specific school. And I think you already guessed it. Let's take a look at our last two tables, our students table and our subjects table. If we take a look at one student, that student can participate in multiple subjects. And if we take a look at one subject, then there can multiple student, there can be multiple students that participate in that subject. So in this case, um, we have a so-called N to M relationship. And those are essentially the three types of relationships we can have in relational databases. So one to one, one to N and N to M. So let's actually take a look at how we can identify um, or how we can actually make use of those relations. So for example, how can we determine in a database here um, which director belongs to which school? So for one-to-one -one relations, that is very easy because we can just save the primary key property of the school also in the directors table. So we just add the property school name to each director. So if we take a look at an entry in the directors table, we can immediately see the school name that director actually belongs to. And that just works because that is a one-to-one -one relationship and we, don't, uh, and we know that each director at, um, only belongs to one school. And the other way around, we could also save the director name for each school table, or actually for each entry in the school table. So because there can only be one director for each school, we just save the name of that director in the school table. And with this information, um, what Room can do, or what um, SQL databases actually can do is, they can link these up so that we can join tables. So for example, the uh, the school table, the director table, so that we can also access the properties that are saved in the director table. Well, we only have a single property here, the director name, but let's say you also have the address of a director, um, the city of a director, then we can link these tables together, the school table and the director table, and see, okay, the director from the Kotlin school lives in New York. And that is the true power of relational databases here. So let's take a look at the next relation, our schools and students. Here we can just take the student name and save it in the school table because a school can have multiple students. So how can we know which students actually belong to a specific school? We can simply determine that if we do it the other way around because it definitely works to save the school name in the, in the student table because we know that each student only belongs to one school. But the other way around, this doesn't work. So we can save the student name in the school table. And now quiz question, how can we do that with N to M relationships? Because if we take a look at our student and subject table, which is um, linked by such a relationship, we can neither save the subject name in the student table because a student um, visits many uh, multiple subjects here and we can also not save the student name in the subject table because a subject can be visited by many different students. So to solve this problem in end to end relationships we actually define a new table and there is no way around that. So this relation between um, student and subject actually becomes its own table. And this table must contain the primary keys of student and of subject. So we have an additional table that we can call, for example, student subject reference or cross reference. That is how we call it in the code. And that table just saves the student name in combination with the subject name. So each entry in that relation table says, okay, student Peter visits subject math. Student Peter visits subject German. <laughs> student Peter 
visit subject, whatever, um, English. And then we have student Stephen also visits subject math. Student Stephen visits subject algebra and all that stuff. So there can be multiple combinations of the same students and the same um, subjects saved in this extra table represented by this relation. And as I said, it's crucial to understand this first before you actually want to implement such a complex database in your app. Because these principles that I talked about here, these entities, um, attributes, properties, um, and relations, and these different kinds of relations we can have, these will be the same in our code later on. So you have to know um, which relations actually can be thrown away afterwards in which relations must be their own table. So for example here st uh, the relation between student and subject must be its own table but the relation between director and school does not need to be its own table. We can basically throw that relation away and just save the school name in the director table or the other way around. So please let me know below if you like this video if I actually explained that in a good way so that you understood this because this is really not an easy topic if you've never heard of that and also if you're looking for more advanced Android courses then really check out the first link in this video's description you will get to my website plcoding.com where you will find plenty of premium courses that you can just use to even dive deeper into the Android world and with the discount code philip15 you will get 15% off of all my courses on my website so make sure to check it out you also get a lot of stuff free there i wish you an awesome day and as i said please comment below how you like this video see you in the next video bye bye